Welcome to this video about quantitative easing or QE in seven minutes. I am Grégoire Dupont and I have 20 years experience of portfolio management as a hedge fund manager and prop trader. Last week, the US Federal Reserve announced unlimited QE or QE infinity. So what is QE exactly? Quantitative easing or QE is considered as unconventional monetary policy. It is used by central banks to stimulate the economy. Here, the central banks buys long-term securities in the open market to increase the money supply. It is an extension of the open market operations. These open market operations are a key tool used by the Federal Reserve in the implementation of monetary policy. Through open market operations, the Fed is targeting that banks lend at its targeted Fed fund rates. To do so, the Fed buys or removes securities from banks when it wants to lower the Fed fund rates. Or the Fed will be selling securities to banks when they want to increase the Fed funds rate by reducing the capital. Through the New York Fed desks, the Fed will buy US Treasuries and mortgage-backed securities, or MBS. So here are three websites that I find extremely useful, the Fed website, the Fed of New York and the Central Bank of Monetary Authority website with the BIS website. So you should go on their website and try to uh, um, put your address to get email. So let's look quickly at the latest, uh, one of the latest announcements made by uh, the, the Federal Reserve of New York, where here it's uh, announcing the Treasury Securities operational details from the 30th of March to the 1st of April. So every day uh, over the last week, the Fed has been buying bonds and the Federal Reserve of the Bank of New York have been doing so uh, to execute this order. So quickly, the Fed balance sheet in million dollars. So as we can see here, QE started in 2008 with the great financial crisis. So it started in November 2008 and QE 1 terminated in March 2010. But very quickly, QE 2 restarted at the end of 2010 because the economy was still pretty weak and ended up uh, in 2012. In September 2003, we had a, a third wave of QE with Q, Q3, which ended up um, in 2014, at the end of 2014. The Fed, here it is in blue with normalization, tried from September 2017 to July 2019 to reduce its balance sheet. Then from September 2019 to now, the Fed has been increasing its balance sheet through a repo operation. So some of you know that uh, uh, repo is not con considered as QE, but still that had an impact on the size of the balance sheet of the Fed. Then more recently on the 15th of March, the Fed announced QE4. Then a week later, because the credit markets were very weak, they had to go for QE infinity. So let's look quickly at how the S&P 500 has been doing through QE chronology. As you can see here, the S&P has been moving up, but when the Fed has not been doing QE from normalization to now, the S&P was still going up. So even if we can say that um, uh, S&P has been very helped by the role of central banks and QE, that is not the only reason for the strength in equities. If we look as well at the previous spreadsheet, we can see that the size of quantitative easing is getting bigger and bigger. So that tells you about the diminishing returns of quantitative easing. So for the Fed to have the same impact as they had 10 years ago, they had to have a, a, big, a bigger uh, quantitative easing. So what is QE4 and QE infinity that has been uh, recently announced? So on the 15th of March, the Fed announced QE4, which was 500 billion treasury and 200 billion MBS package. But in reality, this package was not enough uh, as the muni markets, uh, mortgage-backed securities, the overall, the credit markets were in panic mode. So the Fed had to increase the package and decided to, to go for 
the big bazooka, which is the QE infinity. In its statement on the 23rd of March, the committee directs the desk to increase the system open market account holdings of treasury securities and agency mortgage-backed securities, MBS, in the amounts needed to support the smooth functioning of markets for treasury securities and agency MBS. The committee also directs the desk to include purchases of agency commercial mortgage-backed securities and its agency mortgage-backed security purchases. So that was the statement. So if we look now at the size of the balance sheet of the Fed, the balance sheet at $4.2 trillion at the end of 2019. Whereas on the 25th of March, there, the increase was already from $1.1 billion to $5.3 trillion. Now we should quickly um, forecast the size of the balance sheet to go uh, up to $7 trillion and even more to 9 to 10 trillion of 50% of the US GDP. So that tells you about the size of the QE4, QE infinity that has been done by the Fed recently, which could go from 4.2 billion balance sheet and doubling or up to 10 billion. So versus this, this size, we will have to compare the size of this quantitative easing versus the size of the US GDP. So in the next video, I will try to look at how the Fed is doing in terms of quantitative easing versus the size of the GDP. I hope it helps. See you soon. Bye-bye.